ok, au prix. Du coup, je quelque part, je suis le stade de. Deuteronomy, chapter 5, verse 1. And Moses called all Israel and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and judgments which I speak in your ears this day, that ye may learn them and keep and do them. Read that again, this one. Deuteronomy, chapter 5, verse 1. And Moses called all Israel and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and and judgments which I speak in your ears this day, that ye may learn them and keep and do them. So now, you notice here Moses is saying, he says, he called all Israel and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and judgments which I speak in your ears this day, which I speak in your ears, because you know, Israel is rebellious. Okay, Israel is rebellious. One ear out the other. That's why he is saying that I may speak in your ears this day that you may learn them, meaning I'm teaching you this, your job is to learn and apply what you are learning, okay? And keep and do them. It's not just to know them, but you must apply what you know. That's what he's saying right there. Watch this. Give me Deuteronomy chapter four. Deuteronomy chapter four, verse one. He said the same thing. So he keeps repeating himself over and over because Israel is slow. Read that, Deuteronomy four, verse one. Deuteronomy chapter four, verse one. Go ahead. Now, therefore, how can O Israel unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them, that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you? He's saying the same thing. He has not changed the subject. Keep the commandments. He keep repeating it over and over again. Okay, go back to Deuteronomy 5 and 1 again. Deuteronomy 5 verse 1. And Moses called all Israel and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and judgments which I speak in your ears this day, mm -hmm. that ye may learn, that ye may learn them and keep and do them. And keep and do them. Go ahead. The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb. So you see what he's saying? Is that the Lord our God made a covenant with us? The same people that he was speaking to. Is the same the same people that is speaking to that to us today. The same people. Nothing has changed. Okay. The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb. Now watch this. Give me that in Psalm 78, verse 10. The covenant that He made with us in Horeb. Watch this. Psalm 78, verse 10. Read that. Psalm chapter 78, verse 10. Read. They kept not the covenant of God and refused to walk in his law. You see what the covenant was that was given to us in Horeb? The law. That's the covenant that was given to us. The laws of God. Read it again. Psalm 78 verse 10. They kept not the covenant of God and refused to walk in his law. And refused, refused, and refused to walk in his law. Now watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4. Verse 44. Come on, Deuteronomy 4, verse 44. Deuteronomy 4, verse 44. Read. And this is the law which Moses set before the children of Israel. Read. This is the what? And this is the law which Moses set before the children of Israel. The law, the law, the law which Moses set before the children of Israel. So Moses gave us the law. That's the covenant that the Lord made with us in Horeb. Okay, go ahead. These are the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which Moses spake unto, unto the children of Israel and they came forth out of Egypt. You see that thing? When we came forth, forth out of Egypt, Moses went to the mount. He received the lively oracle to teach unto us. You understand? That's the covenant the Lord made with us in Horeb. Now watch this. Give me the book of Exodus 24. Exodus chapter 24. Let's start at verse 1. We're going to read that. Exodus chapter 24 verse 1. Wait. And he said unto Moses, Come up unto the Lord, thou and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship ye afar off. He says, worship ye afar off. So he is choosing men. 
You understand? Watch this. Give me the book. Second Samuel, chapter 6, verse 1. What we're reading in Exodus 24 is the chosen man that the Lord was dealing with. Now watch this. Second Samuel chapter 6, verse 1. Mm. Again, David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. You see that thing? It says, David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. Not everyone is going to be in the front line. The same way, not everybody is going to be on the same level. Because that's how the Lord did it for us, for our sake. Okay? When you read the book of Acts, it's the same thing that he did. We understand when you read the book of the, the gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the same thing that Christ was doing with the 12. Okay, read on. And David arose and went with all the people that were with him from Beali of Judah to bring up from thence the ark of God, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts. That dwelleth between the cherubims. That dwelleth between the cherubims. Okay. So now what I want to show you here is when they were going to receive the Ark of the Covenant. The point is, they were chosen men. He didn't say everybody. He says, uh, together all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. Okay. Now go back. Exodus 24 verse 1. Exodus 24 verse 1. Read. And he said unto Moses, come up unto the Lord. Thou and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, really? and seventy of the elders of Israel, Come on. and worship ye afar off. Come on. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall come not nigh, neither shall the people go up with him. You see that thing? It says, and Moses alone shall come near. You understand the Lord? But your, the, all of you, you must just stand back. Okay. Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and the seventy elders is the same that Moses will come alone. Read. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord, and all the judgments, and all the people answered with one voice and said, "All the words which the Lord had said, we will do." Hmm. Will Read we that again. Do? Read that again. This thing. Exodus chapter twenty-four, verse three. Mm -hmm. And Moses came and told. The came and told the people all the words of the Lord Read. and all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which the Lord hath said will we do. Jump down to verse 6. Verse 6. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. Read. And he took the book of the covenant. He did what? And read it. And he took the book of the covenant. He took the book of the covenant. The same covenant that the Lord made with us in Horeb. He took the book of the covenant. Go ahead. And read it in the audience of the people. You see what he did? He took the book of the covenant. He read it in the audience of the people. Meaning what? In their ears. So that all of them can hear what's coming up. So it is today. Read and they said, all that the Lord has said will we do and be obedient. It says, all that the Lord has said will we do and be obedient. And guess what? We were just bearing false witness. We broke every single one of those laws that we said we going to do. We said, what's the proof? The proof is we're in captivity. We're in slavery right now. Why? Because we lie to the most black. Okay. Read verse 3 and 7 again. Together. Exodus chapter 24, verse 3. And Moses came and told the, the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words of which the Lord had said will we do. Jump down to verse 7. Verse 7. And he took the book of the covenant and read it in the audience of the people. And they said, All that the Lord had said will we do. And be obedient. Next verse. Go ahead. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people. Now remember, and said, this, hold on. This right here is symbolic of what Christ did. You understand? 
He shall sprinkle many nations. Let's talk about the 12 tribes of Israel. Let's read the book of Isaiah. Go ahead. And sprinkle it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant. The what? Behold, the blood of the covenant. Behold, the blood of the covenant. Behold, the blood of the covenant. Hmm. Go ahead. Which the Lord hath made with you concerning all these words. You see what the covenant is about? The covenant, the blood of the covenant is what? Is concerning all the words of this law. All the words concerning all these words that Moses received. You understand? From Mount Zion. Guess what? The priest says, Behold, the blood of the covenant which the Lord has made with you concerning all these words. So guess what? So as it was back then with the animal sacrifice, the blood of the animal, so it is today when Christ died for us. His blood was the blood of the covenant concerning all these words, concerning all the words that are written in this book. That's why when we read 1 Corinthians 11, verse 2, 3 down, guess what? We are beholding, we are saying, listen, we are now, uh, we are accepting, we have accepted the covenant and we are, we are, we are telling the Lord that we're going to do all the, all the words of this law. That's what we are saying. You understand? It's a heavy, heavy contract that we are making. Every day when we break in bread, we are affirming that contract. So guess what? When the child comes, it's not going to be fun. Okay? Read that again. Read that again, verse 8. Exodus chapter 4, verse 8. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant, which the Lord hath made with you concerning all these words. You see that thing? So now, I'll put it like this. When the Lord returns and we're still in our wickedness, listen, there's no, I'm sorry, um, I, I didn't know. There is, on that day, it's too late. You understand? Watch this. I'll give you an example of what I'm saying. Mm, because the judgment that's coming is going to be quite severe. It's going to be very... That's why Abbasu says, I want to be dead on that day. Why? Because the Lord showed him how it's going to be like when he returns. It's not going to be any... It's not going to be a, it's not a nice day. You understand? On that day, is not a nice day when the Lord returns. Watch this. Um... Let me see. Give me the book of Amos real quick. Give me Amos chapter 5. Well, it's not going to be a fun day. Okay? It's going to be... Oh, that day is a day of... It's a day of gloominess and thick darkness. Give me the book of Amos chapter 5. Let's read verse 18. Amos 5 verse 18. Amos chapter 5 verse 18. Read. Woe oh, unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Mm. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. You see what he's saying? He says, Woe well, unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? Because if you desire the end of the, the way, the day of the Lord, what will be the end of you on that day? That's what he's saying. That's what Amos is saying. That's what the Spirit of Christ is saying in Amos. He says, the day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Read. As if a man did flee from a lion, mm -hmm. and a bear met him. You see that thing? So imagine, you are running away from a lion. He's giving an example. He says, it's going to be as if you are running away from a lion that wants to devour you. And then guess what? You meet a bear where you're going. Go ahead. And went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall. And a serpent bit him. You see what he's saying? So now you run, you run into your house. You understand? When you get to your house, you're leaning against the wall. Remember, he said that day is not, is not, is darkness and it's not light. You understand? But what he's saying is that you walk into your house, you are leaning against the wall because you kind of sort of know the bearing in your house. You know where what is. But he says when you lean against that wall, a snake bit you. Meaning what? There's no way to run on that day. That's what he's saying. Okay, there's no way to escape on that day. Watch this. Give me the book of Habakkuk. Give me the book of Habakkuk, chapter 3 now. 
Habakkuk 3, verse 16. This is what Habakkuk said. Okay? Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 16. Go ahead. When I heard my belly tremble, mm. my lips quivered at the voice. Go ahead. Rottenness entered into my bones, and I trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble. Mm. When he cometh up unto the people, he will invade them with his troops. You see that thing? So Habakkuk is telling you, Habakkuk was a mighty prophet, you understand? So he's saying, listen, I want to be, I want to be at rest on that day. I want to be at rest. I want to be sleeping in rest on that day. So that when it's all over, the Lord can wake me up. But obviously, Habakkuk is letting you know he's not going to be asleep on that day. He's going to be awake. He's going to see the day of the Lord. Because the Lord showed him already in the spirit what's coming. Okay? Now watch this. Give me Give me the book of Second Peter. Okay, give me Second Peter, chapter three. Give me that in Second Peter, chapter three, and verse. Let's start with verse. Let's start with eight. Second Peter, chapter three, verse eight. Second Peter, chapter three, verse eight. Read. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing: that one day. Is with the Lord as a thousand years. Read. And a thousand years as one day. Go ahead. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. The Lord is not as slack. Some men... Hold on. Wait. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Meaning the promise that is the, the promise that he's talking about. What is he talking about? Hold that. Give me the book of Luke chapter 1. Luke 1. Luke chapter 1, verse 31. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Okay. Luke chapter 1, verse 31. The Lord hasn't forgotten the promise he made with our forefathers that he will not forsake your seed. Luke 1, 31. The book of Luke chapter 1, verse 71. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. So now this is the promise that the Lord has made. He says that we, the children of Israel, should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Next verse. Watch this. Come on. Perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. You see that part right there? He says to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. The covenant that he made, he made with us in Mount Horeb, the same covenant, the new covenant, the same covenant that is now under Christ. You understand? To perform the mercy the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. Okay, come on. Verse 73. The oath which we swear to our father Abraham. Come on, read on. That he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. That's when we receive power when the Lord delivers us out of the hands of our enemies. So that's the promise the Apostle Peter is talking about. Now let's go back to the book of 2 Peter, chapter 3, okay, verse 9. 2 book of Peter, chapter 3, verses 9. Come on. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Read. As some men count slackness. As some men count slackness. When it says, as some men count slackness, what does that mean? Jump up to the third verse 3. Second, second Peter, 3 verse 3. Second book of Peter, chapter 3 verse 3. Read. Knowing the first, knowing this first, that they shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts. Meaning what? Those that don't believe the Bible. Okay, they don't, I don't want to hear that. Me, I believe in science. I believe what they're saying is, I believe in witchcraft. Go ahead. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? You see that thing? That's the part right there when it says, some, as some men count slackness. Meaning what? Where is the promise of his coming? Because, you know, I had a brother, some guy, he asked me, he said, is Christ really coming back? 
I said, yeah, he's coming back. He didn't believe it. He don't believe it. He was concerned about everyone else. You understand? He didn't believe that the Lord is coming back. Read that again. The book, first, second book of Peter, chapter three, verses four. And say, where is the promise of his coming? Where? For since the fathers fell asleep, meaning since the fathers died, things, since our forefathers passed on, right? All things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. So that's what they think because they are looking at things with their physical eyes, not with spiritual eyes. So in their mind, all things continue as they were from the time of Genesis. Okay, right? For this, they willingly are ignorant of. You see, you see what the Lord is saying? He says they are willingly ignorant. For these are willingly ignorant, meaning they go out of their way to be ignorant. Read. Second book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 5. For this they willingly are ignorant of, mm. that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. When it says the, the earth standing out of the water and in the water, it took about the flood. It took about when the Lord is. Just the earth with the flood. That's what it's talking about. Read. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. You see that thing? The world that then was, meaning the kingdom that was back then before the flood was overflowed with water and it was perished. Read. But the heavens and the earth, which are now uh -huh. by the same word. Stop right there. He says, but the heavens and the earth which are now. So the heavens and the earth which are now talk about the kingdoms that are ruling right now. The heavens and the earth which are now, go ahead, by the what? By the same word. By the same word. The same word. Remember what Noah was doing. What was Noah doing? Noah was teaching. He was a preacher of righteousness. Give me that in the uh, same chapter, the same book, Second Peter 2. Second Peter 2 verse 5. Watch this. Second book of Peter chapter 2 verse 5. Read. Right? And spared not the old world. The old world. The same world that we read about in chapter 3. Read. Right? But saved Noah, the eighth person. Come on. A preacher of righteousness. You see what Noah was teaching? Noah was doing what we are doing today. Our forefather Noah was a preacher of righteousness. That's the same thing we are doing today. We are teaching our people to repent, keep God's laws, and prepare for the second coming of the Messiah. Right? Bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. You see that thing? Bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. That is the world that was then. You understand? But the world that is now with the same way, by the same way, the same way that Noah preached is the same way that we are preaching today. Go back to chapter 3 now. Okay, chapter 3, verse 7 again. Second book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 7. Read. But the heavens and the earth, which are now. Come on. By the same word. By the same word. By the same word that Noah preached in Second Peter 2, verse 5. The same word. Read. Are kept in store. Are kept in store, meaning they are reserved for what? Read. Reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. You see that thing? So the same world, the same way the, the most high God preserved the world back then, he kept it in store to be de to destroy it with water. So it is today. The Lord is going to do the same thing this day. He's preserving the earth, meaning what? For, the, for, for destruction and perdition of ungodly men and women. But this time it's going to be with nuclear fire. You understand? That's the day of the Lord. The day, the same day that Habakkuk was talking about. You understand? Remember it says, don't forget the thought now. It says, behold the blood of the covenant. You understand? The blood of the covenant concerning all these words. Guess what? That's the same thing that Christ did. Because he brought us into the new covenant. You understand? By his blood. The same way we were under the first covenant by the blood of the animals. We are under the new covenant by the blood of Christ. That's why I read the book of Hebrews 6. It's uh, Hebrews, Hebrews uh, 10, 
28, when you read down, when it says the punishment under Christ is greater. Listen, this is just showing you here that what's coming, you don't want to, you, you, you don't want to be looking forward to that day. Read. That's not supposed to be your focus. Your focus is supposed to be, am I doing what is necessary lawfully to make sure that I prepare myself for that, that great and terrible day? That always must be your focus at all the time. You understand? Watch this. Mm, keep going. Second book of Peter, so 3 verse 8. Read. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. Mm -hmm. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. Read. And a thousand years as one day. So now you really need to think about it. Say, okay, it's been, since Christ left the earth, it's been 2,000 years plus. Okay. So in the eyes of the Most High God, he, when did he give us this? And I want to know who's thinking. Brother Bezilian, in the eyes of the Lord, when did he give us this? In the eyes of the Lord, when I didn't hear you correctly, sir. Okay, I'm saying in the eyes of the Lord, when did he give us this word? In his mind, in his eyes, from his perspective. It's two days ago. Uh-huh. He's only been just been two, two days, days ago. Sir. Two days ago. So two days ago, the Lord gave us this. Think about it. Two days ago, the Lord gave us this. So you can't say, oh no, but the Bible is an old book. No, no, but they gave us this. They gave this to us two days ago. You forgot already? Two days ago? Why do you think the Lord keeps just repeating himself over and over? Because Israel is slow and dense. Okay, keep going. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Uh -huh. Read. As some men count slackness. The slackness that he's talking about is what we read from the, the three down. Read. But is long suffering to us. He says the Lord is long not suffering. Not willing or any. Wait, the Lord is long suffering to us. What does that mean? The Lord is giving us, he gave us the spirit of grace. He gave us a great pillar to get ourselves together. That's what it means. The Lord is long suffering to us. Okay. Give me that in Isaiah 42. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 13. Watch this. The book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verses 13. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. Read. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. That's when the Lord, that's when now it's time for the Lord to let loose, to, to allow the angels that are holding back the nations from going to war so that his children can, he can be sealed with the laws of God, guess what? On this day, those angels are not going to hold back destruction. They're going to allow the destruction to start here on this earth. Read. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. He shall prevail against his enemies. That's what you read about in, in Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 8. It says, wait ye upon me. Read. I have long time holding my peace. You see that part right there? I have long time holding my peace. He's saying, listen, I've been restraining myself. He was long suffering to what? To make sure that we get sealed with his laws so we may be delivered. Read. And refrain. I have been still and refrained myself. Now will I cry like a traveling woman. Read. I will destroy and devour at once. That's when the Lord is now is going to tear some, some stuff up. But the point here is that it says, I have long time holding my peace. I have been still and restrained myself. He's long suffering to us what? Because what? He's giving us a chance to get the kingdom. Because the Lord wants us to get it together before he the least son returns. Okay? So go back to where was that? Second Peter 3. Okay, Second Peter, chapter three, read verse nine again. Second Book of Peter, chapter three, verse nine. Mm -hmm. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, 
not willing that, that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's what the Lord wants. The Lord wants us, to, wants us all to come to repentance. You understand? Those that are approved, he wants them to come to repentance. That is what the Lord is looking for. Read. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. That's the first judgment. The second coming of Christ, that's the first judgment. You understand? He says, but the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night. Read. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. That's the big bomb, okay? The nuclear bomb. Read. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Because that's how hot is going to be. Give me that in Malachi 4 verse 1. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. What type of weapon is capable of doing that? A thermonuclear weapon. Okay? Malachi 4 verse 1. Read that. The book of Malachi chapter 4 verse 1. And behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. All and all that proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day shall come, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts. Read. Really? That is, shall leave them neither root nor branch. You see, so on that day, so Malachi is seeing the end of the world, and he prophesying to listen. It says, for behold, it, it says, the day cometh, that shall burn as an oven. So you really have to imagine the type of weapon that is capable of what? Of making you feel like you're inside an oven. What type of weapon is capable of doing that? That's a nuclear weapon. Okay? The elements shall melt with fervent heat. Let's go back to 2 Peter 3, verse 10 again. Second book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 10. Read. But the but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, mm -hmm. in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, really? and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The elements shall melt with fervent heat, read on. The earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Shall be what? Shall be burned up. So that's the first judgment. You understand? That is the first judgment. So then it's going to follow the second judgment. Now watch this. Give me that in the second Ezra chapter 9 verse 11. Let's start at verse 11. Second Ezra 9 verse 11. Second book of Ezra chapter 9 verse Let's, 11. You know what? Let's start at verse 9. Let's start at verse 9. Second Ezra 9 verse 9. Second book of Ezra chapter 9 verse 9. Then shall they be in pitiful case the, the the they that shall be in pitiful case is those that are going to what that are going to suffer the second judgment yes they will uh, they will suffer the first judgment which is nuclear weapon destruction and the second judgment as well which is the judgment that will endure forever okay read that part again second book of ezra chapter 9 verse 9 then shall they be in pitiful case, mm -hmm. which now have abused my ways. Meaning rejected God's law, right? And they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. You is see is, is what he's saying? And they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torment. Right? For such as in their life have received benefits. Meaning life is good. Life is good for them. Everything is good. They don't struggle for nothing. You understand? Read. And have not known me. And have not known the law. Meaning don't keep the commandments. Come on. And they that have loathed my law. You see that part right there? Though and they that have loathed. To loathe means to hate. To despise. That's what we read last night in Romans chapter 1. It says haters of God. Inventors of evil things. Go ahead. While they had yet liberty. While they had yet what? While they had yet liberty. That's the grace. Okay, read. And when as yet place of repentance was open unto them. Because that's what the great period is for. The great period is a place for you to repent. The great period is an opportunity for you to repent. 
That's why it says, yet a place of repentance was open unto them. That's the grace period. A chance for you to get yourself together. Wait. Right? And when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not, mm -hmm. but despised it. You see that thing? I don't understand. I don't get that. Yeah, these are women's pants. Okay? This is how I feel. It makes me feel comfortable when I wear like a hawk. You see that thing? So it says, but despise it. Because they reject what the scriptures say, they'll tell you how they feel. Next verse. Wait. The same must know it after death by pain. He says, the same people that despise and loathe the laws of God when as yet the place of repentance was open unto them, he says, the same must know it after death. Meaning the first judgment when the Lord makes his second coming. The same must know it after death by pain. What is that called? The second death. Okay? The same must know it after death by pain. Give me that in Revelation 14, verse 9. The book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark on his forehead, or in his hand, so now this goes into the white image of Jesus being what being used as the as the as the Jesus Christ, as the real Jesus Christ of the Bible. You understand? And our people that worship and bow down to that image, meaning what? To follow the doctrine that comes with that, to move in the spirit that goes with that doctrine. Read. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. Right. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. You see that part right there? It says he shall what? He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. This right here is death by pain. The same must know it after death by pain. So now you are now, remember, the judgment comes, then death and destruction comes, meaning nuclear weapons, your body, your, 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 your flesh is melted, you understand? Your, your, your tongue is melting in, in, the, in your mouth, the, your eyes are popping in their holes, and then you fall to the ground. Guess what? Yeah, that's the first death. The second death is what? After a thousand years, you're going to be woken up, and that's the final judgment. And guess what? This is where everyone is going if we do not keep the commandments of the Most High God. That's why it says, blessed is he that is what? That is part of the first resurrection. You understand? Revelation 21. Watch this. Revelation chapter 21 and verse 7. Start of verse 6. Start of verse 6. The book of Revelation chapter 21 verse 6. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that in a, th a thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. That's wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Go ahead. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. Shall what? And that he that overcometh shall inherit all things. He that overcome their own sin. We all are dealing with stuff. If you overcome, you understand? You overcome, you fight to overcome, and you overcome it, and the Lord returns. While you are still good in that, you have overcome it. The Lord says, guess what? You're going to receive your crown of righteousness. Okay? Read. And I will be his God. And he shall be my son. Read. But the fearful. But the fearful. The fearful. Because the Lord didn't give us the spirit of fear. The most high God did, did the, 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 the most high God did not give us the spirit of fear. Okay. He didn't give us the spirit of fear. So when we move in the spirit of fear, it means that we are not moving in the spirit of Christ. Okay, go ahead. 
but the fearful and unbelieving and unbelieving and the, the fearful is the one that you're not moving in the spirit of Christ unbelieving you don't believe what is what the, what what is written in the book read right? and the abominable the abominable read right on that's what you can read about that in the Greek of the 18th chapter read right? and the murderers and murderers hate hate meaning hatred also read right? and homangers homangers read right? and scorners not sorcerers meaning witches read right? and sorcerers Come and on. idolaters mm -hmm. and all liars and all liars right? shall have their part in the lake burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death you see that thing so that was that's the second judgment which is the final judgment that's what coming guess what go back to exodus 24 because we forgot already exodus 24 we're going to read verse 7 and 8. The book of Exodus chapter 24, verse 7. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. And they said, all the words the Lord had said, we will do and be obedient. Come on. Moses took the blood and sprinkled it to the people and said, behold, the blood, the blood of the covenant which the Lord had made with you concerning all these words. You see what it's saying right there? So the blood of the covenant, the same blood, the, the blood of the animal that was spilled under the first covenant, the most that God made a second covenant, which was also based on what? Blood being spilled. But this time it was the blood of his only begotten son, the Christ, to die for us, to give us what? The chance to get the kingdom. So whenever we read the scriptures, you always find where the scriptures are saying, listen, go back to Deuteronomy 5 and 1. No, verse 2. Deuteronomy 5 verse 2. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5, verses 2. Read. The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb. You see that thing? The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb. That covenant, is the, is the judgment for it, is very, it's, it's very it's dire consequences under Christ because now we, if after this, there's no more sacrifice. Christ was the ultimate sacrifice. No more sacrifices after this. Okay, read on. The Lord made not this covenant with our fathers, but with us, even us, who are all of us here alive this day. Because it's that same generation that was back then with Moses is the same generation today back on this earth. Read. The Lord talked with you face to face in the mount of the midst of the fire. Come on. I stood between the Lord and you at that time. Because what? What was he? He was a mediator. That's what Moses was. He was a mediator. He says, I stood between the Lord and you at that time. Because the Moses was a mediator. Read. To show you the word of the Lord. For ye were afraid by reason of the fire. And went not up into the mount saying. Read. I am the Lord thy God. Which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. From the house of bondage. Go ahead. Thou shalt have none other gods before me. Thou shalt have none other gods before me. Go ahead. Thou shalt not make thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters beneath the earth. Come on. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Really? And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. He says, he show mercy unto them, unto thousands of them that love him and keep his commandments. So when we keep God's commandments, the most that God will show us mercy. Okay, give me the last 35 verse 20. Ecclesiastes chapter 35 verse 20. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 35 verses 20. 
Mercy is seasonable in the time of affliction, as clouds of rain in the time of drought. You see that thing? It says, mercy is seasonable in the time of affliction. So when affliction comes upon you, you understand when the Lord is going to bring forth judgment on you, you want, you want the Lord to deal with you according to his mercy. Okay? The most that God is looking for that type of spirit. Now, go back to where was that? Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 11. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 11. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that take his name in vain. Really? Keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Six days thou shalt labor and do all, all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy ox, nor thine ass, nor any of thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates, that thy manservant, that thy manservant and thy and thy maidservant may rest as well as thou. Really? And remember that thou wast a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out thence through a mighty hand and by a stretched out arm. Therefore, the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath day. Honor thy father and thy mother as the Lord thy God had commanded thee, that thy days may be prolonged and that it may go well with thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou, neither shalt thou commit adultery. Neither shalt thou steal, neither shalt thou bear false witness against thy neighbor, neither shalt thou desire thy neighbor's wife, neither shalt thou covet thy neighbor's house, his field, or his manservant, or his maidservant, his ox, or his ass, or anything that is thy neighbor's. So now, these are the ten commandments that we just read. Okay? You can go, you can read about them also in Exodus 20. Read. These words, the Lord spake unto all your assembly in the mount, out of the midst of the fire, of the cloud, and of the thickness, of the thick darkness, with a great voice. And he added no more, and he wrote them in two tables of stone, and delivered them unto me. Okay, so you are reading too quickly. You are missing stuff here. I need, I need uh, brothers and sisters to pick up what is being said. Read the screen two again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5, verse 22. These words the Lord spake unto all your assembly in the mount out of the midst of the fire, of the cloud, and of the thick darkness with a great voice. And he added no more. And he wrote them in two tables of stone and delivered them unto me. Really? And it came to pass, when he heard the voice out of the midst of the darkness, for the mountain did burn with fire. That's Mount and Zion. Near... So Mount Zion was, was on fire. Mount Zion was on fire. Watch this. Give me the book of Exodus chapter 20. Exodus 20 and verse... Let's start at verse 18. Exodus 20 verse 18. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 18. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. Because Mount Zion was on fire. Okay, go ahead. And they said unto Moses, speak thou with us and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. Really? And Moses said unto the people, fear not, for God is come to prove you. And that his fear may be before your faces, that he said not. Read. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. Moses did what? And Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. So Moses, he says, Moses he drew nigh unto the thick darkness where the Lord was. So when he says Mount Zion was on fire, yes, it was on fire. You understand? Because the people, they said, they were saying, listen, Moses, we want to speak to the Lord, just like you, Moses. The Lord said, okay, 
Let me show you how you want to speak to me. And then when they saw Mount Zion on fire, they're thundering and the lightning, they're like, you know what, Moses, mm, you better you, you, you do it. Okay. Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 5 now. Deuteronomy 5 verse 23. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 5 verses 23. And it came to pass. When you heard the voice out of the midst of the darkness, for the mountain did burn with fire, that he came near unto me, even all the heads of your tribes and your elders. Wait. And he said, Behold, the Lord our God had showed us his glory and his greatness, and we have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. We have seen this day that God doth talk with man. And he lived with it. Meaning what? When they saw the things that were going on back, back then, what the Lord was doing, they believed. But shortly after that, they did not believe what Moses was saying. You understand? Go ahead. Now, therefore, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us. If we hear the voice of the Lord our God anymore, then we shall die. Right? For who is there of all flesh that hath heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of the fire as we have and lived? Because there's no nation that has seen that thing before. We are the only nation that the Lord was able to show us a voice of a man, a voice coming from the midst of a burning bush. We saw that. And on Mount Zion. Okay, right? Go thou near. And hear all the all that the Lord our God shall say. And speak thou unto us all that the Lord our God shall speak unto thee. And we will hear it and do it. Really? And the Lord heard the voice of your words when you speak unto me. And the Lord said unto me, I have heard the voice of the words of this people, which they have spoken unto me. They have, they have well said all that they have spoken. You see that thing? Meaning what? They took a good game. That's what the Lord is saying. Right? Oh, that there were such an heart in them. Meaning what? The right mind. They would have, if, if, if only they had the mindset was correct. If their mind was right. That's what the Lord is saying. Right? That they would fear me. That they would what? Keep, that they would fear me. That they would fear the Lord. Right? And keep all my commandments always. Come on. That it might be well with them and with the children forever. Really? Go say to them, get you in your tent again. Come on. But as for thee, stand thou here by me. And I will speak unto thee all the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which thou shalt teach them. That they may do them in the land which I give this it. Read that again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5, verse 31. But as for thee, stand thou here by me, and I will speak unto thee all the commandments and the statutes and the judgments, which thou shalt teach them, that they may do them in the land which I give them to possess it. Read. Ye shall observe to do, therefore, as the Lord your God hath commanded you. Ye shall not side to the right hand or to the left because you are reading too fast man come on i need you to pay attention you are reading too quick you are reading like you are running somewhere read the 32 again the book of deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 32 ye shall observe to do therefore as the lord your god had commanded you ye shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left you shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left meaning what you must walk the straight and narrow he said, don't, look, don't go to the left, don't go to the right. Don't be stuck between two opinions. That's what the Lord is saying. Meaning what? Don't be double-minded. Okay, go ahead. Ye shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God hath commanded you, that ye may live, and that it may be well with you, and that ye may prolong your days in the land which ye shall possess. So now the only way we're going to pro prolong our days, because this goes beyond... Um, during the time of David and Solomon, it took about the kingdom of heaven when we possess it again. We are going to be able to prolong our days because we'll be keeping the commandments. You understand? 
This prolonging of days goes into what? Living forever, everlasting life. That's what it's going into. Because it has to do with the land. When we possess the land, we'll be able to prolong our days because we'll be keeping the commandments in the land that the Most High God promised to our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let's go to chapter 6, verse 1. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 1. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that you might do them in the land whither you go to possess it. You see that thing? He's still saying the same thing. If you want to go, if you want to possess the land that I promised to your fathers, this is the stipulation. Keep the commandments. That's what it says. Read. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God, to keep statute and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son, and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, that and that thy days may be prolonged. Read this two again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 2. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son, and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. That thy days may be prolonged upon the land. The same thing we just read in Deuteronomy chapter 5. The same thing. Moses keeps repeating the same thing over and over to us because he keeps telling us, listen, you want to get access to the land? You want to prolong your days upon that land? Keep the commandments. The same thing, the same thing that Moses said back then is the same thing that we are doing, we are teaching today. You want to you want to rule the nation on earth forever? Guess what you must do? Keep the commandments. You want captivity to end? Keep the commandments. You want to stop being slaves? To being, to, to being slaves, keep the commandments of the Most High. That's the same thing that Moses was saying back then. It's the same thing today. The same word that Noah was teaching back then is the same word we are teaching today. Read. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers had promised thee, in the land that floweth with milk and honey. So now he's telling us exactly the land that we are going to watch, the land that we, 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 we are, we, the, the land that was promised to our forefathers, that if we keep the commandments, we're going to prolong our days in that land. That's the land that floweth with milk and honey, which is the glory of all land. Give me that in Ezekiel 20. We're going to start at verse 5. Ezekiel 20, verse 5. The land that floweth with milk and honey. Which is the glory of all land. Read that. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 20, verse 5. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, In the day when I chose Israel and lifted up mine hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob and made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt, when I lifted up mine hand unto them, saying, I am the Lord your God. So now you, you have a notice. The Lord just keeps reminding us over and over how he delivered us out of the land of Egypt. He keeps reminding us. Now, don't forget now. Read that again. Verse 5. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 20, verse 5. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, In the day when I chose Israel, and lifted up mine hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob, and made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt, when I lifted up mine hand unto them, saying, I am the Lord your God. Because when the Lord deliver, was delivering us with a mighty hand out of the hand of Pharaoh, that's how the Lord made himself known unto us. You understand? Our forefathers saw all those miracles, the wonders and the signs. What the Lord, when the Lord was putting, was destroying the Egyptians. Okay? We saw all of that. Right? In the day that I lifted up mine hand unto them to bring them forth of the land of the the book of Ezekiel 20 verse 6, in the day that I lifted up mine hand unto them to bring them forth of the land of Egypt into a land I had spied for them, flowing with milk and honey, into which an, is into, the glory. Into a land that I, into a land that I had spied for them. Read. Into a land that I had spied for them, flowing with milk and honey, 
which is the glory of all lands. You see that thing? The land that I have to fight for them, the land that is flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. What land is this? That's the land of Israel. You understand? The land of Israel is the one is the subject here. The land that flows with milk and honey. Watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8. Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 8. We're going to start at verse 7. We're going to go over to understand what is the, milk, the land that flows with milk and honey. Let's get some examples of this. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 7. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land. That's the land of Canaan. The land that, the land that was promised to our forefather Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Go ahead. A land of brooks of water. Mm -hmm. Of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills. That's what you read. And you read about this in Genesis, the second chapter. About the rivers. You understand? About the, 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 the river that, that, uh, that passed into four heads and all of that. You understand? That's what he's going into. That's, the, that's how fertile the land is. Right? A land of wheat mm -hmm. and barley. Right? And vines and fig trees and pomegranates. A land of olive, of oil, olive, and honey. So now he says the land that flows with milk and honey. Okay. The land that flows with milk and honey, which is the glory of all land. This land right here that flows with milk and honey, because in order for you to have honey, you need bees. Bees, they need to, they need flowers to pollinate. So the flowers, it goes into what? It goes into plant life. Botany, like we read about in Genesis 1.29. Okay, not today, the last night. So what you are seeing here in Deuteronomy chapter 8 is giving you the, the is, is making it plain what it means, the land that flows with milk and honey. Okay, the land of wheat, barley, vine, fig tree, pomegranate, a land of oil, olive, because you, you may, may plant olive to get the olive oil. Honey, you need plants, they need to have flowers. You need to they, so that they can pollination can go on, so the bees can create what honey because the land is fertile because it's water, like we read about in verse seven. Read verse seven again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter eight, verse seven. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills. Now jump down to verse nine. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. You see that thing? You're gonna eat bread without scarceness, meaning you're not gonna have, you're not going to be, you're not going to lack anything. The Lord is going to take care of us on that day. Okay, go ahead. Thou shalt not lack anything in it. A land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. You see that thing? Meaning what? The mineral resources, we're going to have abundance of them. And nobody is going to be able to take those things again from us like they did when they colonized us and took our land and our resources. Like we read about in Deuteronomy 28, verse 33. They are not, this is not going to happen no more. You understand? So that is what the Lord is teaching us when he says that the, the land that flows with milk and honey He's not talking about um, honey and milk. No, he's not talking about that per se. Okay, go back to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 3 again. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 3. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers had promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Because the Lord promised to our fathers, and guess what? It shall be done. Now watch this, because right now, the land of Israel, there's nothing growing down there. The, everything that they have is, is things that are, that are, is, those are, those, those are things that are imported. Okay? The, they're importing everything. 
from the grass to the plants to the trees and so forth because nothing grows there because the people of the land is not there. You have two thieves fighting over a real estate that don't belong to them. Because they read the scriptures, they know what the Lord says about that land. It's the glory of all land. They know this thing. Okay? Watch this. Um, let me see if I have time to go that way. Give me the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 18. The book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 18. Okay. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land. You see that thing? Then will the Lord be jealous. The Lord will be what? Then will the Lord be jealous for his land. The Lord will be jealous for his land. Because right now, somebody else has occupied our land. Give me Joel chapter 3. Okay. Joel chapter 3 and verse 2. The book of Joel chapter 3 verse 2. I will also gather all nations and bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. And will, and will, and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. Read. And will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel. Go ahead. Whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. You see that part right there? They've scattered us among all these nations and guess what they've done? They've parted our land. They don't belong on that land. So they've parted our land. That's why it says the Lord will be jealous for his land because somebody else has kicked us out and they've parted our land. You understand? Now who tro Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Right now, the time of the Gentiles is not fulfilled yet. Meaning what? We are in the midst of that promise because the Gentiles are over there and the true inhabitants of the land is not over there. The Palestinians, the, uh, the Palestinians or the Arabs and Amalek, they have parted our land. You understand? Joel 2, verse 18 again. The book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 18. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. You see that thing? And pity his people. What does that mean? Give me the book of Isaiah 14, verse 1. The Lord will be jealous for his land and pity his people. Read that. Isaiah 14, verse 1. The book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. You see that thing? That's how the Lord is going to pity his people. The Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Read. And will yet choose Israel. You see that thing? So that's how the Lord will pity his people. Read. And set them in their own land. Mm -hmm. You see what the Lord, the Lord is the one that will do it. Not the League of Nations, not the British government, not by some buff, buff for declaration mandate, no, no, by God's word, by as it is written in the Bible. The Lord is the one that will take us back to our homeland. Read on. And the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. So now, what I wanted to show you here is the message that the Lord has promised unto us. Okay, let's go back to Joel. Joel 2, verse 18 again. The book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 18. Read. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Read. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. You see what the Lord is promising us? He says, I'm going to send you corn, wine, oil. You shall be satisfied the way I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. Because right now, we are a reproach among the heathen right now. You understand? We are a reproach among these heathen. 
Let me show you the level of reproach. Give me the book of Lamentation. Okay. Lamentation chapter 1. Lamentation chapter 1. Verse 17. Read that. Lamentation 1 verse 17. The book of Lamentations, chapter 1, verse 17. Read. Zion spread forth her hands, mm -hmm. and there is none to comfort her. Go ahead. The Lord had commanded concerning Jacob that his adversaries should be round about him. Come on. Jerusalem is as a menstruous woman among them. You see that thing? Jerusalem is as a menstruous woman among them. A woman that is put away during a menstrual cycle for seven days. That's how the nations look at us. You understand? The most that God is beginning to wake us up in these last days. But the nations, they still despise us. We are still a reproach unto them. Because as a nation, we have not, we have not come to a level where all the nations will know that Israel is right here. Okay? So when they look at us, they want to say, this is the people that the Lord said is the perfection of beauty. Go back to Joel now. Joel 2, verse 18 again, verse 19. The book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 19. Go ahead. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. Jump down to verse 22. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. Really? For the tree beareth her fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. So now, is this going in? He's going into the tree. He's talking about us. Read right on. Be glad then, ye children of Zion. You see that thing? Now he's clarifying it. Verse 22, he was, he was not being plain. Verse 23 is telling you he's talking about. Read. And rejoice in the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. For he hath given you the former rain moderately. And he will cause to come down for you the rain. The former rain. And the latter rain in the first month. So now he said, he says, I'm going to take care of you. Because in order, for, in order for, for the land of Jerusalem to be the glory of all land, the most that God must bless it with the rain is a blessing. Okay. Rain is a blessing from the most high. I remember when I was still in primary school, because every year, you know, cows would be dropping dead, they'd be dying, and things like that. And so what would happen is that at the school, the, the teachers, there was just one teacher, okay, he would gather the children together, okay, and then we would be praying, we would go outside and we would start praying for rain, all of us. We were still so young, like we would be shouting for the Lord to hear us because there was drought. I remember we were doing that, we were still young, I mean, we were all, didn't know nothing. But I still remember, I remember that. And my God was rain. Okay. <laughs> the most I brought rain down on that day. Okay. My point is rain, rain is a blessing from the most high. Okay. So that's why he's telling us here about rain, because in order for us to have uh, vegetation, to fruit and veggies, for the livestock to eat, when it says milk and honey, because in order for the cows to produce fresh milk, they need what? They need grass. It needs to be fertile. It's, it's all of that. They're all working together. So rain is a blessing. Okay, go ahead. And the floors shall be full of wheat. Mm. And the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. Go ahead. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. Now that is talking about the other nations. He says, I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten because... The nations are doing, they are just devouring everything of ours. Read. The canker worm. The canker worm. And the caterpillar. Read. And the palmer worm. Mm -hmm. With 
my great army which I sent, my great army which I sent among you. So now it says, my great army which I sent among you. Now watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy 28. Okay. You see this chapter right here? It's a beautiful chapter. You see Deuteronomy 28? Excellent chapter. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 38. 28, 38. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verses 38. Thou shalt carry much seed out into the field and shall gather but little in. For the locusts shall consume it. You see that thing? We were carrying much seed into the field. It says the locusts will consume it. Who was the locusts? The nation that put us in slavery, that made us to work in their plantations because they were the one that was consuming everything that we planted. We would plant that would reap the benefits of our labor. Go ahead. Thou shalt plant vineyards and dress them, but thou but shalt neither drink of the wine nor grape, nor gather the grapes, for the worms shall eat them. So that's what Joel is talking about when it says the former one. It says. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to restore unto you everything that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. That's the nation he's talking about. Okay? That's what he's talking about right there. Read that part again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verses 39. Thou shalt plant vineyards and dress them, but shall neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worms shall eat them. You see what he's saying? For the worms shall eat them. That's the same thing we read in Joel, chapter 2, verse 25. So the Lord is saying, I'm going to get rid of these nations that are around about you. You understand? That's what he's saying right there. And he's going to kick the imposters out of the land, and we're going to get our land back. That is the promise that the Lord is, 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 is showing us here. Okay, excellent, excellent chapter. Okay, let's go back. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and the... I just wanted to touch on that so everyone can see that. Even some more. Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 6 and the... Read verse 4 now. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4. Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. The Lord our and God, thou, hold on. The Lord our God is one Lord. Now, this is heavy right here. Because when you read the New Testament, when the apostles were teaching, there was, probably, there was no New Testament written. Okay, read that part again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Now watch this. Give me the book of Ephesians now. Ephesians chapter 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. You know what? We're going to start at... We're going to... Let's go to Luke first. Luke 12. Okay. Luke chapter 12 and verse 28. Let's start it. I mean, Mark. Mark 12. Mark 12. I'm sorry. Mark 12 verse 28. The book of Mark, chapter 12, verse 28. Mm -hmm. And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked them, which is the first commandment of all? You see what he's asking? Now, remember the scribes, they always like, they always like to debate. Okay? Which is the great, which is the first commandment of all? Watch this. Go ahead. Jesus answered him. And, the and first, Jesus answered him. You are skipping words here. Read verse 29 again. The book of Mark chapter 12 verse 29. And Jesus answered him. The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. You see what he's saying? So what is he quoting? He, what we just read. He's quoting what we just read in Deuteronomy 6 verse 4. He is quoting what we just read. Because remember what, mm, let's go to Luke now real quick. 
Luke 24. Luke chapter 24 and verse 25. The book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 25. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all the prophets that have spoken. All that the prophets had spoken. Read again. The book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 25. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Because they didn't believe what the prophet had spoken. Watch this. Go ahead. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Read. And beginning at Moses mm -hmm. and all the prophets, Read. he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. You see what he's saying? He began at Moses and at the prophets. That's why he was quoting Moses and he was quoting the prophets because the New Testament wasn't written. Now watch this. Give me the book of Ephesians now. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 4. Ephesians 4 verse 4. Watch this. The book of Ephesians chapter 4 verses 4. There is one body and one spirit even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. Read. One Lord. Mm. One faith. Go ahead. One baptism. This is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Go ahead. One God and Father of all, mm -hmm. who is above all, and through all, and in you all. You see that thing? So, what was the Apostle Paul quoting? Because that sounds like the same thing we just read in Deuteronomy 6, verse 4. Mark chapter 12, verse 29. The same thing. So where did the Apostle Paul begin as well? Because Christ began at Moses and in the prophets. Let's go to the book of Acts. Okay? Acts chapter 28. Acts 28, verse 23. Read that. The book of Acts chapter 28, verses 23. Read. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning till evening. And some believed the things which were spoken, and some believed not. You see that thing? So the Apostle Paul, where did he begin? He began at Moses and out of the prophets concerning Christ and the kingdom of heaven. The, the New Testament wasn't written. So the things that the Apostle Paul and them were speaking about was there was what? They were speaking things that were written in the law and in the prophets because the prophets didn't speak anything different. We spoke the same thing. Okay, let's go back. Deuteronomy chapter 6. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 4. Verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. The Lord our God is one Lord. Read. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul Read. and with all thy might. Go ahead. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. Read that again. Read the six again. What? Okay. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter six, verse six. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. So if they shall be in your mind, they must be in your mind. They must think in your spirit. Read. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest. And when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Meaning what? 24-7, you must teach your children the laws of God. That's what it says right here. Okay, go ahead. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand. And they shall be as, front, as frontlets between thine eyes. Read that again. And thou... 
the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 8. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand. And they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. It says, these laws that I'm teaching you that you must listen to, and you teach your children these laws, it says, they shall be a sign upon thine hand. Because with your hand, you do what? You, it is a symbolic of application. Okay? Because it's your, your action behind what you know. Okay? It says, they shall be a sign. It shall be for a sign upon thine hand. And they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. Now watch this. I'm going to deal with that part and it says, uh, a sign upon thine hand. Let's go to the book of Psalm. Okay. Psalm 137. Psalms 137, verse 5. The book of Psalms, chapter 137, verse 5. If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, mm -hmm. let my right hand forget her cunning. You see what it's saying? It, it, if I forget thee. For when you forget, because where, where, where does that take place when you forget? In your memory. It takes place in your memory. Your memory is what? In your brain. Your brain is here in the front. Okay? So he says, if I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. Meaning what? Let me not teach the laws of God. That's what he's saying right here. Go back to where you were at now. You come and see. Verse 8 again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 8. Wait. And thou shalt bind thee for a sign upon thine hand. Mm -hmm. And they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. They shall be as frontlets between your eyes. So when it says they shall be a sign upon thine head, because based on your action, based on what, what, what is in your mind. If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. Okay? Then it says, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. Give me the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4. They shall be as frontless between your eyes. Let's understand what he, what, what Moses is, is teaching us. Okay. Read that. The book of Ezekiel chapter 9 verse 4. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and set a mark upon the forehead of the men that sigh and that cry, for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Because you see what it's saying? It says, go through the midst of Jerusalem and set a mark upon the forehead of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. So in order for you to sigh and cry based on the abominations that you see done among your people, done by your people, that they must repent in their rebellion against God's commandments, the mark that is set between your on your forehead, what is that? The laws of God. The laws of God is in your forehead, between your eyes, as a frontlet, as frontlet between your eyes. Because guess what? The laws of God will open your eyes, your spiritual eyes, and your spiritual ears to see what's going on. That's why you'll be able to watch your sigh and to cry. Our people in the world right now, they are not saying and crying. And if they do sigh and cry, it's not based on the abominations they see that be done, that are done by our people, abortion, teenage pregnancy, you understand, adultery, whoredom, okay, uh, gang violence, HIV, so on and so forth, poor education, poor housing. They don't sigh and cry. And why we as a people we deal with one another the way that we do. They don't sigh and cry. They sigh and cry because, guess what? Um, Ramaphosa is not answering their prayers because he's their God. That's why they sigh and cry. They don't sigh and cry for the betterment of the nation of Israel. Okay? So the mark that is said upon the forehead that Ezekiel is talking about is talk about the laws of God in your mind. And once they're in your mind, you're going to do what's in your mind. That's what he's saying. Go back to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 8, once again. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 8. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, 
and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. You see that thing? They shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. Right? And thou shalt write them down upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. Meaning what? When you come in, okay, you know, can somebody come to your house, you have that on your door, at your gate and so forth, you know? And thou shalt write them, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 10, and it shall be, when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which we sway unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not, and houses full of all good things, which thou fillest not, and wells dig, which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full. Hmm. Then, now, hold on, wait, wait. Verse 10 and 11, you see these two verses right here? This goes into the kingdom of heaven as well. The plentiness that the Lord is going to give us, he says, he shall eat and be satisfied. What we're reading here is the Lord is promising us that I'm going to take care of it. Okay, because read verse 10 again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 10. And it shall be, when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sway unto thy fathers. That's the land of Canaan. Okay, go ahead. To Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee and to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not. So now, what, houses, hold on. It says, it says, goodly cities which thou buildest not. Meaning, we are not going to be able, we are, going, we are not going to build these cities. So, who's going to do it? That's this. Give me the book of Isaiah, chapter 60. Right? You're going to dwell into cities which thou buildest not. Okay. Isaiah chapter 60, we're going to read verse 10. Isaiah 60, verse 10. The book of Isaiah, chapter 60, verse 10. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. You see that thing? The sons of the strangers shall build up thy walls. The nations are going to do it. Okay? Read. And the kings shall minister unto thee. Their kings, their nobles will minister unto us. They're going to bow the knee. Go ahead. For in my wrath, I smote thee. You see that thing? Because when the Lord was angry, how did he smite us? We ended up in slavery. We were colonized. We were kicked out of our land. Okay, go ahead. But in my favor, have I had mercy on thee. That's the same thing we read in Isaiah 14. Same thing we read in Joel 2. Go ahead. Therefore, Thy gates shall be open continually. The gates will be open continually. Why? Go ahead. They shall not be shut day nor night. Wait. That men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. Meaning their riches, their wealth. While they are building their own cities, we're going to be taking their wealth from us. I mean from them. Because where did they get the stuff they have? They got it from us. Wait. And that their kings may be brought. That their kings may be brought. Okay, go ahead. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. You see what the Lord is saying? They are going to perish if they don't want to bow the knee to the king of Jacob. Right? Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. They shall be utterly wasted. So now let's go back. Deuteronomy 6 verse 10. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 10. And it shall be, when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not, mm -hmm. and houses full of good things which thou fillest not, and wells digged, which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full. 
You see what the Lord is saying? Because guess what? These cities, they are well going to build them. The nations will build up our wall. You understand? That's why when King Solomon take, took the throne, he put people to, he put the heathens to work. Okay, go ahead. Then beware, lest thou forget the law which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. You see what the Lord keep doing? He, he said, I don't want you to forget what I did for you. He's saying, then beware, lest thou forget, because Israel has to make you familiar. Okay? Then beware, lest thou forget the law which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. He said, don't forget now. How do we forget when we stop keeping the commandments of the Most High God? That's us forgetting. Go ahead. What the Lord did for us when He delivered us out of oppression. Read. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve Him, and shall swear by His name. Go ahead. Ye shall not go after other gods, or ye shall not go after other gods. Really? Of the gods of the people which are round about you. Mm -hmm. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you. Lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God as ye tempted him in Massa. You see what he's saying? I mean, don't tempt the Lord with evil. That's what he's saying. When, when you do evil, don't make excuses. Just take the, take the L, take the humble pie, repent and keep it more. That's what the Lord is looking for. You know? Ye shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God mm -hmm. and his testimonies and which he hath commanded thee. So now what I want to show you is he says, you shall diligently, that's the key word right there, diligently keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and his testimonies and his statutes which I come with, which he has commanded thee. That's what when he says his testimonies, he says his testimony, not your personal testimony, his testimony. What is the Lord's testimony? The things that the Lord did for us. When he delivered us out of the land of Egypt, that is the, that's the testimonies of the Lord. We must praise the Lord for his testimony. Okay, read on. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, mm -hmm. that it may be well with thee, read. and that thou mayest go in and possess the good land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers. You see that thing? The requirement, the prerequisite to go into the promised land, we must be keeping the commandment of the Most High. Read. To cast out all thine enemies from before thee, as the Lord had spoken. Read on. And when thy son asked thee in time to come, say, What mean the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord our God had commanded you? So now, you see that part when he says, And when thy son asked thee in the, in the time to come, in the future, your son or your daughter, what means the testimonies and the statutes? In order for them to ask that, they need to know the testimonies of the Lord. Guess what? Because we are teaching them. They, how are they going to know how to ask? That's the same thing when you say, do your chapter so you know what to ask. Because if you don't ask, you don't know what to ask, that means you're not studying. Okay, go ahead. Then thou shalt say unto thy son, we were Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And the Read. Lord showed signs and wonders, great and so upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh, and upon all his household before our eyes. So now Moses is telling us this. Everything that the Lord did for your benefit, you saw it with your own eyes. So he's, he's rehashing the history. Because Israel is rebellious. Okay, go ahead. And he brought us out from thence that he might bring us in to give us the land which he swore unto our fathers. And the Lord commanded us 
to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is at this day. You see what he's saying? So he said, listen, keep the commandments of the Most High God. Don't forget the law. So now he's saying not only that, but teach your children to remember my testimony. So that in time to come when they ask you, this is the answer you're going to give them. So that they set their hope in the Lord. That's what you read about it there in Psalm 38. That they must set their hope in God. Okay? Not in no PlayStation or Bible. Okay? Read. The book of Deuteronomy 6 verse 25. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he had commanded us. So now this is the conclusion of chapter 6. So we don't forget. It shall be our righteousness. Everything that he just said, you, you went to keep the laws, you get the land, you prolong your days upon the land. Teach your children the laws of God. You're going to possess the land that flows with milk and honey. You understand? So that, when they, you, so that your children need to teach them, they put their hope in God. In the future, when they ask the questions, these are the answers you're going to give them. You're going to give them the testimonies of the Most High God. In conclusion, it shall be our righteousness that we observe to do all the commandments of the Lord as he has commanded us. So when he says that in, in, in righteousness, he talk about all the stuff that he just made. That's what he's going into. Okay? So I'm going to end it at chapter 6. Then we're going to continue on with chapter 7. All right? I'm going to end the class right here. Uh, let's break through. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed to bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take it, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the new testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the most high hand to that last